everybody, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I paint a rose, or I should say a wild rose design, on this green glass bottle. This is a bottle that I use for a lot of my videos, so I do wash and clean it in between after I wash off the previous design, and then I paint over it. If you're going to be working with glass, make sure you clean it with soap and water and that you go over it with rubbing alcohol once you're done cleaning it just to make sure all the oils and any lint, any dirt, that type of thing has actually been removed before you paint. Alright, today in this design I am going to be using a number 10 deer foot stippler and a number 4. I am also going to be using three flat brushes, a three-quarter, a number 12, and a number 10. I'm also going to be using my favorite fine liner by Westonia and a dotting stylus. Sorry, dotting stylus. Alright, paint I'm using for this design is Berry Wine, Citrus Green, oops, Wicker White, Moon Yellow, Yellow Ochre, and Thicket. Now, anytime I paint a design, obviously you're more than welcome to use the color combinations you want. You don't have to use what I'm using, but I like to let you know just in case you want to use those or you have those on hand. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to begin, and I like to try to show you the loading on my brush. I know sometimes that's hard with depending on let me go back here a little bit. Depending on the size of the item that I'm painting. Alright, so the first part of my design, I'm just going to be double loading the wicker white. Did I include that in that? I think I did. I am using wicker white. All of these are folk art paints, combination of enamels and multi-surface. Now you can load your brush like this, or you can dip the sides into it, and then do your blending strokes elsewhere. And typically you're supposed to have three quarters of the brush full. I am not real good about adhering to that. So you'll, you'll find your way as far as what works for you. Alright, let me try to turn this guy. I know I'm a lefty, so you might have to put your design going in opposite direction than where I start. Like say I'm starting from right to left, you might need to go the opposite direction. So if you're going by what I'm doing and it doesn't feel right, that could be why. And this is just a basic wiggle stroke. Now when you're doing this, you can leave the center open because you're going to be pouncing in the center or you can have it closed up. I'm painting it more with a closed type of design, but that's up to you. Definitely. If you feel like you need to go over your design again, you can do so. You can either wait till it dries or you can just do another coat while it's wet. Again, that's up to you. And you may need to adjust your design based on the size of the item that you're painting on. Because I do my designs on paper before I actually do them on glass. So I do have to make some adjustments. The main thing you have to be careful when you're painting on glass is that you're not, not overworking the paint. Alright, I'm still going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to do my biggest design and then I'm just going to do... A few just little smaller, smaller unopened. And I could switch to another brush, but I'm choosing just to keep this brush because I want to use the other ones for something else, another type of design, another part of my painting process. And you can wiggle your brush more so that the edges are not so straight, that they're a little more rigid, if you want. Alright, so I have that part. I'm going to set that brush aside, 
And the next thing I'm going to do is take my liner brush, my little fine liner, and I'm just going to dip it into my green, and that's the thicket green. I'm going to go through and start doing some pulling here. And this is just creating what would be in the inside of the flower, but you're not going to actually see all of it because another petal is going to cover it up. And you can make it full or you can make it just a few of these being pulled up to you. Make them thin, you can make them thick. Again, that's your decision. And I'm even going to do it on this one, even though it's really small. I think it's kind of fun. The more details you can show, the more fun the design is, I think. Even if it's not completely accurate, that's fine. It doesn't really make one difference here, neither here nor there. I am going to hit this with a heat gun just to give it some drying time because I do want to pounce in the center before I go any further. Alright, so the next step I'm going to do is to tap in my center of the open flower and I'm going to do the yellow ochre on the front part of this and the moon yellow on the back part and I just normally once I load the brush I just kind of tap it I don't know if you can see that or not it's kind of hard when you're trying to fit everything into a small screen alright so here we go I'm going to go around the center. I want it to be a pretty good size center too. I'm trying to go around it, basically make it make it as round as I can. And I'm running out of the yellow ochre. I haven't been able to get any new, so don't have as much of that to work with as I'd like. But I do want to put it on pretty thick and have most of the lighter yellow towards the bottom of the flower or what I would conceive as the bottom and leave it like that. The next thing I'm going to do is take the smaller one and I didn't do this on the last on my sample so I'm not sure and I'm sorry my my uh, air conditioning is starting up so I apologize for that noise in the background but I'm going to tap in the center and I do have a little bit of the because these, these bristles kind of spray out. So I do have a little bit more going into the green there. But I used, you can tap this in with a brush if you want. Meaning a, like a, um, just like your fine liner or whatnot. But I'm going to choose to do it with this instead. Kind of leaving a center open with the yellow ochre. And if you find that it's too much, you can always go back in and add add more color back in, like the yellow. If I felt like this was just getting too much green out here, I can go back in and tap it, kind of fix it up a little bit. Same with the yellow in the center. I can do that, just tip the, the brush towards the back. Love these brushes, by the way. Absolutely love them. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is pick my fine liner brush up again and put it into the thicket again. Then I'm going to go around and do some pulling around this one from the center out. But I actually want these to come out beyond the center. And you don't have to have where they're full on coming out. Like the center doesn't have to be completely solid with green lines. But I do want around the flower to have green coming into the flower petals if at all possible. And then just keep doing this around it. I like to have these kind of make them like they're going in different directions. I don't really like them straight. If you like them straight, that's fine. Do what you need to do. This is, you know, my rendition of it. So if you do something different or feel like something else looks better, go for it. And we're just going to just lightly do this because then we're going to come back in and add dotting. And again, if you feel like this part is just too much, 
too much green in the center when you're pulling it out. You can do some, but mainly focus on, um, on the parts coming out into the flower itself. I kind of like it like this. Okay? So, then the next thing you're going to do is pick up your dotting stylus, and I'm going to begin with yellow dots. I'm going to start clear down here, and I am going to give them a lot of dots. Now, you could also decide to wait until you put the next layer of petaling on, if you choose to. But I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. And I put them on pretty thickly because I really want them to be seen prominent. And again, this might not be re this might not be realistic, but I like it. I just really feel like the more detail you have, a lot of times the more interesting your design will be. Sometimes less is more also, just really depends on the situation. put some dots towards the center too, around this, the edge of the, of the center of the flower, not necessarily clear into the center. You could use a brush, you could use your little fine liner and just uh, put in the dots in that manner also, should you choose to do that. going to tap into the white. Now, if you don't want to clean your, your end off, I'm just going to switch it around to another end. I don't really want to get them too mixed up. But I'm just going to go ahead and put a lot of white dots in. Okay, I've got all the dots in and now it's time to get in the vines and the leaves and probably my favorite part. Oh no, I'm sorry. Back that up. It's actually time to, almost forgot, to finish the flowers. Now the open one, it's finished. Now it's finished with this. And the next thing is just to go ahead and put in some of these, your petals to finish it off, like that. And you can even put in some little extra petals along the side if you want. Even just kind of bring them down. Kind of put them in there. Give it more of a finished look towards the base. Or you could just do one and done if you want. You just have to be careful though because if you overwork it, if you overwork it, the paint's going to start coming up and you don't want that. You can also do something where you do more of like a wiggly type of a edge to this layer. You know, there's just so many different varieties that you can do. You can give this more drying time too if you don't want to have the wet on wet pulling some of the dotting out. That's fine either way. All right, so now we're going to go with putting in the stem. And I'm using the thicket, the citrus green, some of that moon yellow. And I am going to go with a thick line. Or or stem, I should say, not vine, coming from behind this flower. 
and then pull it down. Like I said, you can see what I'm talking about as far as the uh, the space that you have to do the the design can be a factor. As far as putting this on here, putting the stem to the base of the flower, I'm going to do it like this and just pretend like it's going in a different manner. Or you could just leave the stems off altogether. You really don't have to have stems on these. You could just create this and just put leaves around them and call it a day. That's up to you. It truly is. I'm going to add some white in here because I do kind of like how the, the flowers look with some white. Or the, not the flowers, but the, the actual little petals that I'm putting in. Look with some white in them. And then you just kind of pull it just to blend it in. You can keep going over the other stems as needed. Doesn't really matter. And like with something like this, you can do more leaves like that. Even pull some down from it. Add in some different colors. Like I said, typically this might be a good design to do on a bigger bottle, whatnot. It's it's up to you. You don't. You could just go with adding some leaves and be done with it. But I'm going to put a, a stem that goes up around this flower, and I am going to be using using this to put in some other leaves. And I could use my bigger brush, but I'm going to stick with the smaller one just because I feel like with the size of this bottle it's kind of cramped. What you can do, you know, you're just your basic kind of ruffled leaves like that and you know, even go up over the flower a little bit that's fine but we don't have a whole lot of room here You can do the kind of flowers where one side is darker than the other and then you have have that kind of a leaf. So the same kind but it's it's got two different colors for the sides. And then going up this direction we're going to do just some more of these kind of leaves. And personally, if I if I were to be painting this bottle for myself or to sell, I would do the design all the way around. That's just me because I think it's pretty with the design all the way around. However, if you choose to just do it on the front, that's great too because it's very possible this this bottle will just be sitting someplace with, I get my thing blended more, with one side of it showing. It's not going to be turned around. And you just have to be patient. Like I said, sometimes with working on glass, it's not as easy as it seems. I like it because it flows, but then on some situations it's um, more difficult to get it to be as opaque as you want it or as clean looking as you really want it to be. And this one here is kind of one of those situations. And when working on a dark green bottle you might choose to do your stem or your leaves with the the green, the lighter green coming out on the edges so you can see them more or do like I like to do and do them going in different directions so that you have a variety like 
that. And you just keep going with it. You know, where just take a look at it and say, what do I need to add? Do I need to add anything to this? Can I just do some basic, easy one stroke leaves? that. Yeah, very simple. And you can just do some smaller roughly flowers. You can do, or not flowers, but leaves. You can do some that are just one-sided where they don't have it coming back down the other side. They don't have to be real, as I say, real clean. They can be looser, loose painting. And I do like when that things overlap a little bit because I think that's more natural looking than if you keep it nice and cleaned and separated. I'm just trying to look here to see where else we need to go with this. Could maybe even put some out this way. I really like leaves, so if you are someone who isn't as loving of, of them as I am, feel free to limit yours <laughs> because I could go crazy with them. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. I think that's a very pretty design. If you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And before you leave, please share this video on your social network with all your family and friends. I would appreciate it. All right. Thanks again. I appreciate your support. If you have any comments, please put them down below. And until the next time, stay safe and healthy. And you have a good one. <laughs>